Hi, my name is Bill Carmody, and I'm the Marketing Whisperer. And today, I am thrilled to have Siri Lindley on the program with me today. Hey, Siri. Hi, Bill. I am thrilled to be here with you, so thanks for having me. See, Siri, I, I, I first really heard your entire story when I was listening to the Tony Robbins podcast. And I will tell you, it is one of the most phenomenal, interesting stories that I've heard in a very, very long time. I love the energy you bring. I love your story of accomplishments from people swimming over you. And for those people who don't even know, you know, you've, you've won uh, Olympic gold uh, uh, tri uh, triathlon, Olympic gold two times in a row. Actually, not a, not a, I hate to interrupt you, ah, but that please. I won a world championship title. Yeah. Yes. But not the Olympic gold. The Olympic gold is what I desperately wanted. And that's <laughs> that was my big failure that actually ended up being the most powerful experience in my life that led to winning a world championship. Well, but I love this. I could have gone along with it and been like, yeah, that feels <laughs> good. Well, so you are considered by most the 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 top trainer of triathlons in the world. So at least I got that part right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. I, I That's a huge compliment and I appreciate it. Um, I, I thank you very much. My, I, I don't know that I can claim that though. <laughs> well, I will tell you from all the people that I know in the triathlon circles, uh, the, all the coaches, everybody else, you know, you are at the very top of the top of the list. And uh, one of the things that's amazing to me about your background is how you have overcome so many obstacles in your life. And I mean this not just professionally, but personally. And sort of the story that I love and what I want to sort of take our audience to and talk about is sort of how you went through as you first got sponsored doing triathlons and sort of the mold that you sort of had found yourself in and what you sort of had to portray and sort of your background and sort of some of the obstacles you've overcome in order to get to the place you are today. Is that okay if we just jump right into that? I would love to jump into that. Um, basically, Bill, you know, my start in the sport, I, I started the sport at age 23. Um, I learned how to swim when I was 23, which which put me at a massive disadvantage to the people that I wanted to be racing against who were former Olympic swimmers and former Olympic runners, whatever it was. But triathlon was basically, you know, people that were the best in one of the three sports, swim, bike, or run, and a good enough athlete to become great at the other two. But I fell in love with this sport through a friend that asked me to come watch her in a triathlon. And I had no idea what a triathlon was. And I felt really silly, but I thought, oh, this sounds fun. I'm just going to pretend I know what I'm doing. So I showed up with all kinds of gear because I didn't know what I was showing up for. <laughs> and I saw this unbelievable race going on. And what I loved about it is that there were some people that looked super fit and that were flying along. And then there were, you know, some older people, like really older people, you know, 70s and even a, a, an 80 year old, I remember at this one race, um, there were, you know, super fit women, men, you know, big, small. And I thought, wow, this is the most incredible thing I've ever seen, because these people look so like excited to be out here and they're they look like they're in pain you know they're they're digging deep and they're pushing through this this event but they seem to be just embracing it and loving it and it just hit me so hard and I was like this is what I want to do and I was a team sport player field hockey ice hockey and lacrosse at Brown University and um, I love team sports. I, I had, you know, I was on the varsity team and in, in all three and had a really successful career in all three. But um, there was a part of me being a kid or, or at this point, you know, a, a college aged woman who wasn't really sure of herself. Um, I think I was really attracted to a challenge that would force me to come up against me. Mm -hmm. And it was not a team supporting me where we could win a game. Even if I have a bad day, we can still win if everyone else, you know, does a great job. And I think I was really ready at that time at 23 years old to take on something where I would come face to face with me and be able to discover what I was made of and what I was capable of. And there's a whole story to, to my beginning in the sport, but it was it was not pretty. <laughs> it was it was um, actually hard to believe how bad it, I was <laughs> in this sport, you know, considering where I ended up. Um, but basically, by the by the time where you want me to start with this story, which I'm so happy to because it was a really uh, kind of a difficult moment in my life is is I had been in the sport 
uh, at the time for about four years. I'd finally gotten myself to the point where I was ready to be turning pro, and that meant racing for my career. Um, long story as to how I got there, but right. it was basically almost miraculous. But I had worked so hard and just devoted my every waking moment to making this dream of mine come true. And I'd gone to Brown University and a friend of mine who was on the lacrosse team now worked for Ralph Lauren. Mm -hmm. um, they had this team that was uh, the RLX team, which was their sporting line. And they were going to sponsor some mountain bikers and some triathletes because this friend of mine was like, I got this friend. She's in a great sport. We should take her on and help her. And I thought, wow, like at this time and, and still to this day, our sport is one of the smaller sports. There's not a lot of opportunity to make a great living or to have, you know, sponsors that really take care of you. And this was an opportunity where I hadn't really done anything yet. I was just about to turn pro and this huge company is saying, you know, we're ready to support you. We want to see you achieve all your dreams. And we know you haven't shown us yet that you're capable of this, but we believe in you. And I thought it was amazing. So totally. it's like winning the lottery yeah. at that moment, right? You basically, this, one of the best sponsors you could hope for comes in and says, we know that you haven't hit your peak yet. And we would love to help support you to make sure that you are able to do what we know you're capable of doing in the sport. So you're thinking, oh my God, this is the most amazing thing in the world. I'm so excited. I was so excited. And and when does this really ever happen in life? Right. And they were going to give us bikes and run gear and, and stipends and free travel. I mean, it was just, I, I thought I was dreaming. And I should, as a side note here, um, when I graduated from college, I started realizing um, that I was gay. And that was a really, mm -hmm. I come from a family, especially on my father's side, that was very um, traditional. Um, this was not going to be an easy thing to have to share with my family. But sure. I was getting to the point where here I was like working so hard every day. And when you're really pushing yourself to these physical limits, you become very raw inside. And, and I felt like part of what would stop me in those really painful moments was that lack of faith in myself because I wasn't fully expressing who I was to everyone else in my world. And I think that yes. kind of held me back from what I was capable of getting out for myself. And I'd reached a point where I feel like, okay, I'm ready to be who I am. There was a part of me that felt I needed to do that to get to the next level in my sport. And I had just reached that point when I got flown to New York City to have this meeting with Ralph Lauren, mm -hmm. not Ralph Lauren himself, but with the company. And it was an amazing meeting. We talked about, you know, all, how amazing it was going to be. But at the end of the meeting, they basically said, one last thing that's really important and critical for this to work out. They said, I know you've, you've got a cute haircut. I had really short hair. You got a cute haircut, but, you know, we're a family company and and everyone on this team is either married or the girls have boyfriends the boys have girlfriends so it's a very family oriented company and we want to project that out to the world so please grow your hair and if you can be open to finding a boyfriend and i sat there <laughs> i sat there and i mean literally going into that meeting i had just um this is my wife, by the way. She's now Hi. on video, everybody. That's my <laughs> wife. Um, so literally going into that meeting, I felt like I finally opened the closet door and I was stepping out with, with you know, I was, I was nervous about it, but I was ready to step out and be open about who I was. But I left that meeting and part of me feels a bit ashamed about it. But in the same note, I, I understand yeah. why I had to do this. But I walked out of that meeting and I slammed that closet door shut and I was back in the closet for the rest of my career. Mm. And I think back to that. And, you know, when you have worked so hard, imagine in the business world yeah. and you've worked so hard to get a name out there for yourself where people are believing in you, people are willing to take a risk on you or with you. Um, people are actually starting to see your value and you're getting opportunities that you never thought you would have before. But then you realize that if a certain part of you 
Um, if you express a certain part of you, you could lose all of that, everything that you've worked for, you know, for basically a lifetime. Um, that's a really difficult position to be in at, the, at that point in your life. And especially since they want you to look and feel, act a certain way, because in many ways, the sponsorship, while you're looking at this from a perspective of being a sports sponsor, they're looking at it as a brand. And they're saying, do you represent the brand that, the, we, that we want to see in all the different aspects of our business? And you know, it's really challenging because on the one hand, you want to be your true, authentic self. You want to be loved for who you actually are, and you want to be able to be accepted for who you actually are. And on the other hand, you have have this amazing sponsorship opportunity without which it's going to be really difficult to be able to continue to grow at the level that you know you want to perform at. And so essentially this becomes really problematic because now there you should be able to just be yourself and just be the best. But now you have to compromise in order to be able to say, okay, well, I need to look a certain way. I need to act a certain way. I need to be a certain way in order to get the benefit of this sponsorship of which there's very few sponsors in the sport. Exactly. And, and that was so beautifully stated. That's, that's exactly where I was. And, um, what I realized now, if, if I can kind of step ahead, so, so it didn't Please. basically that support allowed me to do the training the way I needed to train, to travel where I needed to travel and to reach this level. Um, they actually were shocked because they took myself and a, a American male, uh, Tim DeBoom, who, who's an Ironman athlete. And with both of us, they were like, hey, you guys haven't really shown us anything yet, but we believe in you. And the bonuses were like unbelievable for our yeah. sport. Again, our sport is, you know, if you win a world championship, it was $20,000. You know, that's what you win. For to a win world a, championship. To be the best in the world. <laughs> so, but the best thing about this, about RLX, is that they would equal your prize money. So that year I won a, a, a Quathlon World Championship, which they, the ITU also runs, and the Triathlon World Championship. And that meant that that was $40,000 that they doubled. Mm -hmm. So for me, I mean, that was like, I thought I was the richest person in the world. I just <laughs> made, you know, $80,000. I'd never heard of such so much money. Amazing. Um, and that was incredible. And it really did allow me to not have financial stress, which was hard on me in the beginning, you know, to have that stress. And I was always trying to work full time while I was trying to train. So it really did allow for me. And, and for that reason, I'm so thankful for their sponsorship. And, um, but in the same note, it was a big step back for me as a human being personally. And it was definitely something that I knew later on was going to it was going to hit me face to face and I was going to have to deal with this. Um, mm -hmm. Because a part of it was you're kind of rejecting a part of yourself. Yes. And I know growing up, you know, I had a lot of issues with uh, insecurity and, and lack of self-confidence and fears and anxiety. And when I finally came to a point where I like, it was kind of like me and me against the world. Yes. And I reached a point where I'm like, and don't think I'm crazy here talking to myself, but where I'm like, okay, Siri, I have to live with you every second of every day for every week, every month and every year of the rest of my life. We've got to sort this out. Yes. Like we, we've got to come to an agreement here where I can respect you and love you and care about you and believe in you. And that became kind of my life mission and part of my time in the sport and wanting to reach the level that I did was that I really, I didn't have, have to prove anything to anybody but myself. And I needed to prove that if I wanted something bad enough and I was willing to do every ounce of work necessary, have a full-time job and train at two in the morning and, and do everything necessary that I could actually achieve something that I thought was really special. And I knew that when I did that, that I would finally have earned my own self-respect and belief and faith in myself. And that was the ultimate gift. So, so really triathlon was kind of the vehicle through which I found myself. And that needed to happen because, you know, you can't really uh, go through life not having a great relationship with yourself. 
Um, and that's something that, you know, the great Tony Robbins kind of uh, talks about in, in different terms, but where we are so capable, all of us, of leading these extraordinary lives if we allow ourselves to really be our own biggest fan, you know, be our own biggest uh, support system. And, and that was a process. And, and the whole thing that happened with RLX kind of set that process back because I was rejecting a part of myself and saying, yeah, we're, we're better off without you. And let's forge forward. I'm sorry, I went a little off track. No, there. you know what? It's perfect. So I think what's really important in this sort of uh, sort of story is you got to the point where you truly accepted yourself, decided that the only way you were going to be able to go forward was if you were authentic and real and making sure that people knew all of you and not just this one part of you. You know, if they just knew you as a triathlete, that's one piece of it. But sort of your identity was much richer than that. And it was important that that became part of your story. And I guess what I'm interested in is how you then took these lessons, you know, deciding sort of moving this forward in business and in life and what we can share with other entrepreneurs who maybe are not playing full out, you know, whether it's being honest with themselves about who they are or whether it's about sort of accepting both their limitations and opportunities for growth. Um, you know, what is it that you, having gone through this really amazing experience and transformation, what can you share in terms of hitting these obstacles head on being able to overcome these challenges and maybe even, you know, if you had this opportunity again to do over, what might you do differently and what can others learn from your experience? Amazing questions and, and so relevant. So, um, would I have done it differently? Um, absolutely. But then I think, you know, what happened to me is a, is a great story to be able to share so that other people won't maybe make that same mistake. And it worked out in the end for me. Maybe it wasn't as easy as, or, you know, on the inside as it could have felt or as, as wonderful, but um, it was the story that led me to be able to speak about it now. Yes. Um, as far as what it, it did for me, I mean, I think when we fully embrace who we are and we accept our, our flaws and we accept our little things that we may see as weaknesses, um, and especially when we accept the fact that we're all gonna fail a lot, we're gonna, we're gonna fail often, we're gonna make mistakes, but it's the getting back up again and never giving up and being relentless and resilient. That's what makes us great mm -hmm. in whatever in whatever part of your life you want to be great in. And but what I found by fully embracing who I am as a person is that that led to so much deeper relationships um, with family members or friends, but also deeper relationships with the people I was working with. It's almost like they trusted me more. They didn't feel like I was hiding anything. Sure. They felt that because, and I guess it's something you just sense, you know, people sense, okay, I can trust this person and I can talk to this person. And I really felt that professionally, it opened up so many doors for me. And um, in my job as being a coach, not just of triathletes, but, you know, basically my job is just trying to bring out the best in other people and help them to realize that their potential and tap into that potential and, and mm. create extraordinary things in their lives. But um, it opened up so many uh, opportunities there for me. And I can share a, a one particular story Um I have coached this tremendous triathlete, Marinda Carfrey. She's an Australian. Um, she's won the Hawaii Ironman, which is the Ironman World Championship, three times um, mm -hmm. and is has never been off the podium in the nine years that she's raced there. Wow. And it's a pretty phenomenal um, record. Um, we, I kind of held her off from doing Ironman uh, for a long while, unlike you, because I'm getting you to do an Ironman soon. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> but with Rini, um, she was young and she wanted to do this big race. And I had never done an Ironman in my career. I'd never even done a half Ironman in my career. And she had never run a marathon before. So we decided, okay, in three years, we're going to take this on. And in those three years, you know, I kept coaching her and she was winning all over the place and in half Ironman races. And what I was doing was going around and studying Ironman and studying how athletes train, how coaches were coaching their athletes, what sorts of things were happening in races and what were the dynamics and the problems people were mm -hmm. coming up against and really researching 
what what is this game here and how can we master it? And by the time it was her time to race it, which was in 2009, um, number one, I'm a female coach. Uh, I've never done an Ironman. I've never done a half Ironman. Rinny, which is her nickname, had yeah. never run a marathon, never done an Ironman. And here we, you know, roll <laughs> into Kona, Hawaii. Let's do and this. Everybody's, <laughs> yeah. And everybody was kind of looking at us like, what do they know? What a joke. You know, who do they who do they think? they are. And I know that sounds horrible, but people really were like, sure. gosh, you know, they're crazy coming into this. But I had sat down with Rinny about a year earlier. And I said, look, Rinny, neither, this is new to both of us. And, and at this point, keep in mind, I am living who I am. I'm open. I'm, I'm just, I'm me. And I'm finally respecting myself. And I said, Rinny, I have a plan. It's unlike what every other coach in the world is doing right now in Ironman. You're going to be training different to what most Ironman athletes are doing. Mm -hmm. But I feel in my heart that I trust this plan with every ounce of my soul. And if you can get on board and trust in it with me, then we're going to we're going to be able to go out and do this and and do a great job. It's awesome. And love this girl. Love her. She could have totally just been freaked out like, ah, I got to go find someone else that knows what they're doing. But she was fully on board. And so we trained. We followed this plan that we collaborated on. You know, I shared my ideas and we, you know, we collaborated. And she went out and in her first Ironman ever, in her first marathon that she's ever run, she came in second place at the world championships and broke the course run record. Wow. So that was an incredible feat. And then since then, you know, she's won it another two times. I had another athlete that came in and Leanne Cave from Great Britain um, was able to train her to win that race. And so we've had a pretty amazing career there, which I'm so incredibly thankful for. But my point in this story is that when I finally reached that point where I could feel good about myself, I could feel like, you know what, I'm not going to reject any part of you anymore. I'm going to trust in you. You've shown me what you can do. We won that world championship together, me, myself, and I. <laughs> and it, it allows you to really trust in, in your intuition, in your ideas. Like as entrepreneurs, which, which I definitely am an entrepreneur, we have these ideas. And sometimes we think, oh, that's so silly. And oh, that's not going to fly. But you know what? If you have that gut feeling where you just know. And in that instance with Rinny, I knew that this was going to work. I just needed her to trust in me. Um, but I think, you know, it took number one, me finding that respect for myself and that belief in myself to be able to go with my intuition instead of second guessing it. Mm -hmm. um, and also Rinny to trust in me. And I think that the more open we are and, and the more we are just who we are, like I'm, I'll fully admit, you know, Bill, I've, I've got like so many things that I'm embarrassed about, you know, <laughs> but look, you know, I'm not so bad and I've done some pretty cool things. So it doesn't matter. Like right. I accept those things. Um, but yeah, so I think for people listening here, you know, you're going to be faced with things that knock you down. Right. And um, I've been knocked down so many times, but every time that I have been knocked down, um, and, and most would consider those times failures, um, I look upon them more as, as learning. You know, you're either winning or you're learning. Um, there's no such thing or winning or losing or, or winning or failing, but it's winning or learning. And how I train my athletes is I say, guys, you know, you're gonna have ups and downs and it's in the tougher moments. And I've truly found that, that my greatest moments have come out of those most horrible times, um, those most trying times, you know, the greatest victories came just after that. And it's given me a perspective that when things go bad and they inevitably do in all of our lives, um, to not let it destroy you, it's not the end. And instead look upon it as, okay, I'm being given an opportunity to really learn and learning can be hard, growing can be hard, it's challenging, it can hurt, yes. but wow, it's gonna take me to the next level. And it makes it a little bit easier to get through those bad times because you realize that it's kind of a part of the job. It's kind of a part of our job, you know, as human beings on this earth that um, 
we got to go to those darker spots to really be able to see and appreciate and enjoy the light. So um, if I can, if I can just sort of recap, because I think it's you've said a lot of really good, interesting things. It's you start by being your true authentic self, right? So the very first thing is be your true authentic self and embrace all of you, meaning even the faults, even the things that you don't necessarily love, know yourself, really understand who you truly are and don't try to be something you're not. So that's where the that's the centering part. Then understand that these obstacles that you're coming across are there to help learn and, and help you grow. That is not to be a defeatist in terms of being knocked down and stay down, but it's, it's not even about how many times you win, it's about how many times you can learn from these experiences and get better. So this idea of being able to, you know, this opportunity of when something hits you hard or there's an obstacle in your way, learning how to overcome them is part of the growth that you need to be successful and whether that's in business or in life you should look forward to those opportunities where there's there's obstacles because it stretches you and grows you and helps you become something greater than you were before the obstacle is that right is that right absolutely perfect Great. you're amazing yes that that's brilliant exactly and um, I think one thing to add to that is as you were saying that is really having that clear vision of of where where you are now and and really give yourself credit for where you are now like we often are just if we're not where we want to be we think <laughs> ah you know I'm just I'm but really give yourself honest credit for where you are and know where you want to be and be able to see it in your mind like when I started triathlon like I was so bad but I literally I could feel what it would feel like to win a world championship yes. I could I could see it I could feel feel it, I could taste it. And nothing will stop you when you want it that bad. And you and you know the reason why you want that. Yeah. Um, and sometimes that can sometimes that can change along the way because you have a better understanding of the real why. But um, don't lose contact with that either. Um, because it's in those tough moments that you think, yeah, you know, this is really hard, but it's going to be so worth it when I get there. So um, know that be crisp about your outcome, right? So know your outcome. This is exactly what I want. And more important than knowing the outcome or even the vision, it's why you want it and understanding this is what's driving me. This, the reason this is a must is, and answer that question for yourself because it's in those dark hours when things feel just drab and terrible and you just feel like this isn't going to work out. If you can remember your why, it'll pull you through. It'll Absolutely. help make sure that you are standing up the next time you get knocked down. Absolutely. Totally. I love it. <laughs> so Siri, I just want to say thank you so much. You've been so generous with your time. I really appreciate all your insights. You've been absolutely amazing. Well, thank you so much for having me here. I have such admiration and respect for all the work you do. So it really is a thrill to be here. And I just hope that I will have been able to share some some useful information for everyone out there. So thank you very much. You absolutely have. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you.